in this video we are going to discuss about OLAP systems so what is OLAP system OLAP system is basically a analytical system so the full form for OLAP is online analytical processing okay so it supports analytical reporting okay so uh, in the previous video we discussed about OLTP systems now we'll discuss what is analytical processing and what is analytical reporting so I'll switch to free form quick okay so uh, let's discuss about the features of OLAP first then we'll discuss with an example so first of all what is OLAP so it basically contains historical data okay it is more denormalized okay uh, it, it has uh, like updates you can say the data is mostly read when I say data is mostly read it means the update frequency is very less okay we'll discuss about this uh, the data is majorly filtered and cleaned and uh, it's uh, OLAP system nowadays are supported with two types of databases row and columnar columnar databases okay so these are few of the points that are important and it supports analytical reports this is a very common point okay now when we say analytical reports means more complex queries okay now uh, how it is different from a transactional system okay so uh, in the last video we discussed right OLTP systems basically support uh, time bound data right so the data can be six months one year two years but they have to archive the data or remove the data but OLAP system has historical data from the beginning you can say from origin it basically now consider a company started uh, from 2001 now it is 2023 so they will have all the data history in the database from the origin of the data okay so uh, this is how the historical data basically OLAP system has historical data when we talk about more denormalized it means uh, if you remember the OLTP system right the tables are more normalized broken into multiple tables right OLAP system generally has less number of tables you can say multiple tables will be combined and the data would be put into a single table so this is more denormalized table okay this is an uh, this is why OLAP systems are denormalized now why denormalized will I will understand this in a few minutes okay now data is mostly read when we say data is mostly read it means uh, the queries that are done on uh, OLAP system majorly are select queries okay so data is written once okay and it is read multiple times okay so that is why the update frequency is very less now when we say filtered uh, if you remember data warehousing has filtered data and clean data we basically process cleaned and filtered data through ETL and uh, move it into data warehouse right we do not keep raw data there is no raw data and all data are structured okay so data warehouse has a property we do not keep raw data here okay do not keep raw data and the data is structured so basically the data is cleaned and filtered in a warehouse so OLAP systems uh, has filtered and cleaned data only okay now about talking about row and columnar DB nowadays we have uh, for a OLAP system we have multiple options of having row databases where we you can uh, host your OLAP system and uh, have uh, uh, your queries run and you can also have columnar systems columnar D databases like if you example is one of the example is red Shift. okay so these are columnar databases okay oracle is row database okay so this basically uh, gives performance benefit in certain cases okay because we do not read all the columns in uh, olap query okay we re read selective columns and upon which the aggregation is done okay it supports aggregation 
Now, when aggregation is happening on certain columns, columnar DV has a performance benefit. That is why uh, people uh, nowadays, um, basically systems, uh, columnar systems are more preferred over row systems. Okay, row databases. Now, analytical report we discussed, right? We support complex query. Now, what is complex query? It basically can have joins, multiple joins, aggregations. Basically, the aggregations are complex. So, we can have trend uh, pattern analysis we can have trained analysis uh, all this based on the aggregation right so a company can check it's uh, suppose for a sales order for example if amazon wants to query about its sales order what is happening they can see how many months uh, uh, which month has so they can uh, start the aggregation based on date uh, can do it on month they can do it on year okay they can do it on uh, say for a period of uh, time so they can do it on any warehouse so this can support on multiple so this depends upon their key performance indicators that they want to look into right so this will support multiple complex queries now the question comes do we need all this we can do on our OLTP systems right we can run the joins and queries in our OLTP system but why do we need OLAP in this case okay this is a very important question now we need OLAP because OLAP has all the historical data first example so consider you want to see for a company wants to see its uh, changing trend from 2001 till 2023 it can query into a data warehouse second this is not the live data right so what happens basically is a OLTP system is something which hosts your live data okay now what happens when we say live data it means uh, when if you have a website the users will interact with the OLTP system. Now, during the night, it will we will run a ETL job or a ELT job, which will load the data into a OLAP system. Okay, which is basically a data warehouse. Okay, now the analytical queries, all the queries, the uh, suppose how many, what is the sale for last year, what is the sale for this year, what is the sale for last quarter, everything, all this analytics query will run on this OLAP system okay now why do why we run it on the olap system and not on the OLAP systems so consider the last example right if you remember amazon so it it can be 1 million reads per second or per minute on a oltp system so there is a huge load of the system already now in that case if you are going to run a complex joint queries now since this is more normalized so we'll have more number of joints right because the tables are more number of tables are there so we'll have more number of joints and again this would be a complex query if you run a complex query on oltp system the sub, the system is already catering to the user 1 million reads from the website right and all and you are also running a query over oltp system so what will happen in that case there will be a huge load on the system okay plus this system does not have all the data right so that is the case either you have a form in a oltp system okay where a uh, user inputs a country okay now what is happening is this is the input column right so anyone can write anything okay now for example we are writing india so user can write in a user can write ind a user can write india okay someone might be more interested and can write hindustan okay so they can write anything in this column so if this is not a drop down it's an input field they can write anything now consider the company wants to see how many orders were made from india Okay, so in a OLTP system, this data is not cleaned and not refined, right? So how would they query? How would know which all of them are from India, right? So before having this data, before running this query, what will do? They will do. They will move the data from OLTP system. They will run a ETL process. They will clean the data. What they will do is all of this. They will map to INDIA. Okay, so your OLAP system will have only one field called India one value sorry called india so what they will do they will run the analytical query to find the total order against india okay so in that case they will get the exact value but if if i run the same query in the oltp system i'll get value for this but i'll miss out all this because the data is not clean that is this is one of the another reason why a olap system is preferred for a analytical query and why do we not query over a oltp system